Welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. My name is Chris and happy Friday morning to you. Huge news yesterday, which has, which probably sets the significant precedent for the industry. And yes, XRP is not a security according to Judge Torres. And this is huge news. I still really don't even believe it. Uh, the narrative has really just switched from Bitcoin spot ETF to, oh, altcoins are not securities. And um, I wanted to bring up a couple of things before we get into Bitcoin price action, breaking the four hour range to the upside. Uh, we'll talk about XRP, XLM, jump into some of the hotter altcoins as the Bitcoin dominance is pulling back slightly or call that slightly. Um, I'd say that's a little bit more than slight and would be perfectly fine to come back and kind of retest the breakout level, providing the impetus uh, for some more altcoin pleasures. Also wanted to touch on tether dominance. Again, tether dominance go down, uh, altcoins go up. And we talked about this breaking this trend line. We were expecting potentially a bounce off the trend line. We broke it, shafted right through it. And <clears throat> looks like we're heading da down to the next level, hitting the 1618 fib on the first pass. So yeah, do we, you know, kind of retest this altcoins kind of cool off, which is happening right now. And, uh, and, and then bring it on down. And that's the real line in the sand for me, I would say. Um, 6.43% down below there, very, very likely gonna be a massive altcoin party. And we did have one deviation back there. So we're just looking for this to hold as long as we hold below this trend line. In general, it's gonna be bullish for altcoins. Another point for the altcoin bulls out there is gonna be the ETH BTC chart. I can find it here. That is Ethereum priced in Bitcoin. ETH BTC, where did you go? I'm gonna bring you up here. Okay, so playing out a bit of a bounce, some hidden bullish divergence. What do we have? Price is making lower lows alongside the RSI, making, you know, putting in a pair of higher lows, and I would say one, two drives there. At a minimum, two drives get you a shot to the green 55. Sorry, to the 21, uh, three drives at the top side of the range. So do we come back down one more time and test it? I'm just trying to see if we can get a third drive in there. And we can, if we go all the way back to this pivot right here, that's gonna give you multiple. So one, two, three. And you could be looking for a shot up to this trend line. The last piece of confluence I wanna see for the altcoin, Really, the altcoin party is uh, breaking this trend line, this pivot, um, you know, and we're starting to do it right now. So it, it's first level by level, uh, 64.52, a break above there probably gets you to the trend line. Above the trend line, we're getting to 70.53. And above this area, this is the area we want to clear. And it's going to be party time for Mr. Altcoin. Just imagine this as a green box of peace and prosperity and death and despair. And um, yeah, above that box, generally gonna look good and almost looks like an inverted head and shoulders for Mr. Ethereum. And we did talk about this a couple of days ago, the breakout target on Ethereum, if I can find that one as well, as you can see, I haven't been trading it as much, but inverted head and shoulders target is now to the upside. And the measure move off of this one is back at that I'll call it 20, uh, 2300. I also want to bring up the Gaussian channel for Mr. Ethereum here really quick while I get it up. And I'm going to answer a couple of questions. Oh, I added a lot of them. Uh, that is bright and pink and beautiful. But any kind of a weekly closure back above the mean band will very, very likely going to mean continuations for Mr. Ethereum. Alongside of Bitcoin, uh, the five day, do we already got it? Yes, we do. Putting in the higher low. I mean, this is a beautiful, beautiful formation, cup and handle and the breakout off the ascending triangle for Ethereum could get much, much higher from where we're at today. And I would say, uh, well, this, this would take us up pretty high. 3,600 for Ethereum off the ascending triangle move. 
on the five day time frame. Um, in general, if Bitcoin stays bullish, I would expect Ethereum to follow suit. Probably packs a little bit more punch as it has done in past prior bull markets. Um, okay, I'm gonna take these off and I wanna bring up a tweet here really quick. And by the way, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, post a comment below. I had a really good comment yesterday. Hey, Chris, great video as always. What would be your ideal risk to reward ratio? You know, what profit level would you consider moving your stop loss to break even? So, um, you know, everybody talks about this in trading land. You want to have a, you know, one to three or one to four or one to five risk to reward opportunity. And for myself, actually, I've found that that, um, you know, has not been traditionally what has helped me be most successful. And what I want is setups that have, uh, you know, in trading land, a high probability of, you know, statistically working out in my favor, whether I'm going long or short. So if I can have a trade setup that gives me a 70% hit rate, meaning 70% of the time, if I see these conditions met, I'm going to have a winning trade. I'd rather take that trade that may not have the perfect risk to reward ratio, but um, if I win 70% of the time, well, hey, I'm going to be, uh, you know, winning cuts by a thousand deaths. Um, if, if you know what I mean, and that's typically how I, you know, prefer to trade. So, uh, here's an example. Here's an example, sir, of one of my trade setups that is a brewing right now on the 15 minute time frame for Mr. Ethereum. So, um, here it is, here it is. And I, I don't know what the trade setup on the 15 minute time frame is yielding right now for Ethereum. However, um, just taking a look at this trend line here. If we do break back above this pivot on the 15 minute time frame, we're gonna look good for a pretty decent sized bounce um, as we do have a current setup condition. Nope, not quite there yet. So what I'd be looking for is the BBWP to get below 25%, which is gonna be this area right here. That's the first condition I would like to see met in order for me to take this silver cross trade setup, which is a cross. Okay, here's an example back here. This is the silver cross when the 21 crosses the green 55, giving us momentum to the upside. You want to buy along the green 55 when BBWP is below 25 percentile. And well, you can see this was a perfect trade setup here. So. Here's would have been the, uh, you know, first condition, green 55. Okay. Second condition, BBD. So let's mark it off here specifically. Very nice trade. Very nice trade. Um, this is, and this is why if you want to have a trading strategy and investment strategy, well, it's very, very important. You go to cryptcourses.com where you can still learn how to grow your crypto wealth using TA. Start out at Bitcoin 101. It is 100% free. Just start out and you will learn the basic technical analysis fundamentals that you need to survive and make highly profitable trades. But back on to the trade strategy and setup. So green 55, BBWP below 20%, way down there. This is even better read. And those are your entry conditions. Uh, so you would have entered right there. And then your take profit is when the PMARP gets above 75 percentile, uh, which would have been on that tick right there. So you would have been in, out, and uh, then your risk management. Where's the risk management? So it would have been a nice short-term trade on the 15 minute time frame. Doesn't look like much right here. Right. Do I have the right lines? I don't even have the right lines. Yes, I do. So there was your test and there was your sell. Okay. PMARP. 
if I'm going all over the place, well, go to cryptcourses.com and you'll have a better understanding of what this all means. But essentially, where would the entry be? The entry would have been here on the green 55. Your exit would have been here. Boom. It's a nice profitable trade. I mean, to be fair, you didn't get the whole thing. But, you know, if you can go like this and that in one hour, what kind of gain was that? That was half a point. Half a point, not bad. Quick little scalpy. But um, this is exactly what you want to see. And, um, okay, entry, exit, risk management. So where, technically speaking, if you're trading the 15-minute time frame, if I was trading this one and I wanted to enter here, I would have put this stop loss right below the prior wick low right here. And depending upon how aggressive you want to be, uh, either go below the uh, range wick lows or below uh, the past prior wick low below, you know, right, right behind the last cross. So essentially that's how I would have played it right here. And um, so this is a different type of trading strategy um, where you are taking profit based on when the PMARP gets back above 75. Now, another way to take profit is going to be, well, right at the top side of the range, or if you are targeting a Fibonacci number off of a consolidation, which perhaps um, we don't have enough time to go in there. You could have targeted that 1618 Fib. Uh, but this is more of a short-term scalping strategy. So anyways, uh, entry, static stop loss, hard stop loss, and then take profit right up there. Hopefully that answered your question and I didn't get too deep in the weeds there. Um, and um, yeah, uh, uh, obviously Ethereum went up unabated for many, many percent after that one, but this uh, trading strategy can work not only on, you know, something like a 15 minute time frame, but what do you have here? Well, you've got uh, a very similar setup coming in. It would have been valid right here. Nope. WP has got to be below 25%. So, and the price has to be touching that green 55. So, and you'll notice with this strategy, not every single you know time is it going to line up perfectly um it is just going to you know sometimes close enough is close enough so we have how many touches on the green 55 this probably would have been it nope was this a wick down to the green 55 did we get a wick down on this candle come on help me out here sir oh we got a little lines there No, well, it's not letting me move the line. There you go. So in this case, you know, wick down here, that probably would have been close enough and BBWP would have been below 25%. No, it wasn't. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Yep, so no perfect hits on that daily time frame. So it doesn't always work, but statistically, it has a very, very high favor in playing out for an upside, that's a silver cross to the upside on, um, you know, most assets. Just quickly looking at this inverted head and shoulders. Yeah, we already talked about the target on Ethereum, which is about 2,300 bucks. All right, I'm going to get back into the next question I had. Is XRP still a, still a poop coin after the SEC rule, ruling or could it get to a dollar? Is XRP still a poop coin and can it get to a dollar? Well, only time will tell on that one and um, only time will tell. But I would say that XRP has served her purpose. And what purpose was that? Well, um, you know, helping us out with the regulatory framework on what's a security and what is not. Creating a lot of hype and uh, following in the industry. That's good. Uh, overall, you know, I'm not a you know, XRP maxi. Um, however, I don't think the government should have unscrupulous control to just wave a magic wand and call things securities that are not securities and tie people in court for hundreds of millions of dollars. I think it was criminal what they did to XRP. 
I think, uh, yep. So that's my two cents there. GMX, again, uh, one that I think is going to be strong long term, still in its infancy stages, is having a bit of a breakout. Something I would consider, uh, you know, after the next pullback, probably going to be a major buying opportunity. Again, silver cross to the upside, and uh, that's on a four hour time frame. The higher the time frame, the more powerful, which let's see if we have a current setup right now. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So how would this one work with a closure already below the range wick low there? I would say this. So uh, you entered here, which you might get another entry uh, pullback uh, risk management. So we're entering, exiting risk management right below the prior wick or technically speaking, the way the highest hit rate is going to work is your static stop loss goes here but your uh, your other stop loss, your, uh, I think this is the static, this is the hard, uh, hard static stop loss down here at 58. So you risk a lot more, but the hit rate is much better. Something you're gonna have to battle within your own, but most people say, hey, risk 2% to make for, sorry, you, you want to, you know, risk 0.2% to make, you know, 1.5%. That's a decent risk to reward setup. Um, but to answer your question, let's take a look at XLM, which is breaking down. I do imagine this is a big inefficiency candle and, you know, could have put in one more bounce probably does, but then, uh, overall I'm looking for this one down to about 12 cents to fill out some of the in inefficiencies, right? So not everybody's order got filled. Um, this is looking uh, tasty for a short almost, uh, but I'm not gonna do it while I'm streaming right here. I'm gonna end this, I'm gonna wrap it up pretty soon. Uh, overall, XLM, the hot ones, Ave still pumping, still, um, still, you know, maintaining pace there on the daily time frame. Probably gonna run into a little selling pressure off of this $80, $81 zone, which we got up to. Very nice off the head and shoulders. Link pulling back slightly, 1.6%. Phantom had a big day yesterday, pulling back. Solana had a huge day yesterday. And if we can hold this level, as long as we're back, you know, above 25 bucks, call it, uh, yeah, 25 going to remain bullish on this one. Yeah, back below this pivot and uh, it, the bears are going to have a chance. The weekly position got tagged at 31. So typically you're going to sell off that on the first pass. But notice on the five day, we're blasting through it. The five day is going to close today on all major time frames. So you could see a potential pullback and then relaunch for Mr. Solana but it is breaking the longer term weekly trend to the downside. And so did Manic and a lot of the uh, lawsuit tokens took off yesterday, 30%. Looks like BCH is cooling off a bit back below this pivot at 246 and big legs down to fill the inefficiency candles there. Uh, Bone and Casper, Casper, this has been a a limelight here in the land of cryptocurrency surely uh, surely surely you know strong 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 coin if you're looking at altcoins and um uh, i i think I, I feel like i didn't even say anything on bitcoin today so i guess i'll wrap it up with that um and this little tweet from ted talks macro you know uh this is from yesterday it says today the sec got a slap in the face with in regard to the ideology that altcoins are unregistered securities, uh, you know, the Fed is, you know, this is this is where the markets are at. They're struggling. The Fed, sorry, they're close to pivoting from the most aggressive tightening regime in history, and they'll likely need to cut next year. The spot Bitcoin ETF is under consideration in the U.S., which will potentially open the floodgates for hundreds of billions, even trillions into Bitcoin. As an asset class, I don't think anybody really knows what that means. People are still in the uh, bid mode over here. Uh, you know, I think many investors are still sidelined. Bear market PTSD. Uh, 
not necessarily. I think most people still just aren't even aware. Most people don't even know about the SEC lawsuit yet. Uh, and that is my kind of general opinion right now is the FOMO has not kicked in yet. Retail FOMO probably doesn't kick in till next week and or over the weekend. So short term pullback, um, you know, and consolidation over the weekend, probably continuation going in to next week. Remember, usually not a lot happens over the weekend. Don't quote me on that one. But um, typically the professional traders are going home for the weekend to enjoy their times with their family. This might be the time, though, to put in some overtime. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below if you guys have a question. Make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I will sum it up with this retail. Oh, look, even says um, so post dramatic stress. <laughs> from FTX and Celsius and Luna, etc. But these guys are out of the market now. They've capitulated for the most part. There's no more co coins to sell. Uh, you know, the Celsius thing just got unloaded, FTX unloaded. Retail investors having a ride, check Google Trends. Bitcoin having 300 days away and the largest asset managers in the world are bullish on Bitcoin. Yeah, BlackRock CEO. He is drinking the Bitcoin Kool-Aid and that kind of sums up the market right now. So I'm going to wrap it up with that. Hope you guys have a blessed and highly favorite day. Remember, check out Crypt Courses, join where you can, and it's still free. All right, take care. God bless.